April is a wild ride here in Indiana. We can get everything. We can get some wintry weather still. Of course, we get the severe weather and then there are some nice days in between as well. It's also the start of our rainy season. April is a transitional month. What are we expecting for this April? We're going to go through a couple things. We're going to start with daylight changes because that is the main driver of why we even get seasonal changes and weather changes in the first place. Then we're going to take a closer look at what a typical April is like. Goes through some of the numbers. And then we'll go ahead and look ahead. What will this April be like? Will it be a little bit different and in what ways? So let's go ahead and dive in. Let's start with daylight. We are still gaining a lot. We're gaining over two minutes a day here in Indiana. You go farther south to the Gulf Coast, they're gaining 40 minutes or so, so just over a half hour, 90 minutes, so about an hour and a half towards the US Canadian border. We're kind of in between for Indiana for an hour and 10 minutes or an hour and some change. We're in Indianapolis going to be gaining that hour and 11 minutes, so 71 minutes total. We're more towards the 60s the farther south you go. But the farther north you go, the bigger the daylight change is going to be. This is the same thing for going into spring and we gaining daylight. And then when we're in the fall and we're losing it, it's the same process too. We'll always get the biggest swings the farther north you go. So more daylight more warmth, later sunsets. They're all in the forecast, of course, every single April. By the end of the month, we'll have sunrises back in the six o'clock hour. Sunsets will be getting close to the nine o'clock hour. It's not until mid-May when we we'll have those nine o'clock sunsets, but it's gaining over two minutes a day. In Indianapolis, specifically one hour and 11 minutes. Our days are longer than our nights, and they'll continue to be so uh, for the next several months. All right, what is an average April like? Well, it is the start of our rainy season. And when we're saying rainy season, we're typically talking at least four inches of rain falling. So just under four and a half inches is what we expect in central Indiana. And our average highs tend to be more in the 60s, especially once you're out of the first few days of April. The rest of the April usually average highs in the 60s. So, so warmer air is on the way, but that doesn't mean you can't get wintry weather. In fact, on average, we still technically get some accumulating snow in April, basically a dusting. 0.2 inches. It is the end of the snow season. You know, we've had most of our snow back off towards the past in December, January and February. March, we actually had some at the beginning, uh, a little bit of the month, and then now we're starting to really uh, kind of fall things down with our with our snow chances as our warmer spells are outweighing our colder spells. When we get these bigger systems, a lot of times we are on the warmer side. Well, the parts of northern Michigan towards the UP and Minnesota and northern Wisconsin, they're still kind of in that snow zone for April. All right, we took a look at all the data the past 50 years and we were able to create this map with the help of Purdue. And this is what our average April snowfall map would be like averaging over 50 years. So the light blue color, 0.1 inch, that's a dusting. And once you get into northern Indiana, about a half inch on average or so. But you're really starting to see these wind down. And then you get into the month of May, there's nothing on these maps. On average, we do not get accumulating snow. Now we still can get some traces and some flurries. It's happened before. Uh, opening day, Indy 500, 1989, we had a couple flurries. Uh, so it's possible in May, but April is really kind of the last hurrah when it comes to trying to get some snow to stick. So how much snow we picked up for 2024 into 2025, the winter season? 20.4, also seen National Weather Service put 20.5, potentially 20 inches. It's our best snow year since 2020 to 2021. That was the first full winter uh, of COVID and we had a bigger snow chance there, but on average about 25.5 to 26 inches of snow. So we got closer than normal, but still a little bit below what we typically would we think we would see uh, when we're looking over the past 30 years of data. This map shows you the sneasel snowfall that we had uh, there at the, the end of March. Good totals across much of the state. Uh, Northern Indiana, a little bit behind on where they should typically be. So this is a good amount of snow for them, but not compared to average. Average, pretty close in central Indiana. Southern Indiana got more than average with that uh, foot and a half to, to two feet with that bigger storm that we had earlier in the season. The purple color shows you actually areas where we had a little bit less. We had a little bit less there in parts of west central Indiana, especially once you got just outside of Lafayette and then towards uh, just outside of Jay County headed into northwestern Ohio a little bit less as well. So that's the overall snowfall map for here at home, but then we expand the view. Not a bad year for snow overall. Now in some places that typically get a lot of snow, they may not have gotten to their total, but every single U.S. state has picked up a little bit of snow and that does include Hawaii because technically on the tops of some of the volcanoes, we've had some snow. The biggest snow uh, anomaly that we noticed was the one along the Gulf Coast. A lot of records were broken there. 
earlier in the winter season. So snow is wrapping up, but it's still cold in some of these mornings. This is a map showing you the last freezes and a lot of them start taking place on average in the month of April. A lot of times late April from Indy to the north, although some of our valleys and some of the terrain south and west of Indy, once you get near Martinsville and just outside of uh, Bloomington and kind of the Crawfordsville Greencastle area. Uh, late April, but as a lot of folks say, just wait till Mother's Day. That's what our grandparents used to say. So maybe wait till Mother's Day to be safe, but you can always gamble. Some years you'll be okay, but on average, our last freeze, when we have temperatures between 28 to 32 degrees, is typically mid to late April across much of the state. Now, frost points, a lot of those are into May. So if you have a really sensitive plant, you got to think about the May frost. That can still be a thing, especially the first week or so of May. But April, we start in the upper 50s. We end in the upper 60s when it comes to just our average uh, temperatures that we typically see with this warmer weather. Of course, we're getting the flowers more to bloom. The trees are coming back and the hummingbirds are coming back. We've had to adjust the forecast just a little bit too, but typically for the first week or so of April is when we'll start seeing more of those hummingbirds in southern Indiana and then the rest of Indiana, typically mid April, maybe up to the end of the month. But uh, if we keep on some of these warmer spells, We'll have to accelerate the timeline, but the hummingbirds as of the start of April were being reported across Tennessee, northern Arkansas, just starting to get into some of the Ozarks. So we'll continue to see those hummingbirds fly off to the north. Of course, they like a little south wind to help them out. We're still in the windiest time of the year. Technically, March is our windiest month. April's kind of right there with them. We've got this stretch of four months that were in that really windy category. These are sustained winds on average. You know, on average, we're getting over 10 mile per hour winds there in central Indiana. Of course, you can get gusts 40 and 50 miles per hour. We've had those, so we're still in the windy season. It's just the question is, which direction is that wind coming from? Hopefully it's out of the south to try to warm you up. Also April, some good news. We are ending the cloudiest time of the year. Look at March and all the way through the winter time. Over 50% of our days are either mostly cloudy or overcast and we even split each one. So for example, here in, in April, uh, you can see how many, how many days are usually overcast, how many days are, are mostly cloudy. But for the month of April, we drop below the 50 percentage mark. So essentially what we're saying is that more days we're going to have some sun. Now there could be some clouds, but more days will have sun than just clouds. About a 51% chance for getting some sun. So that's going to be good news. We're trying to turn the tables here. We're, we're getting uh, sunnier, but in those wet days, we're really concentrated in some of the rain because it is the rainy season. So we don't get rid of the, the clouds completely, but on the days where we're recovering, <laughs> they're really nice in the month of April. When it comes to April too, when we warm up, we get sunny days, eventually a front has to come on through sparking severe weather. We're going to show you some of these maps that highlight what we typically see. What are kind of the threat levels for some of our modes of severe weather? We're starting off with wind. Usually wind is a bigger risk there in the summer. You get a lot of heat and they can really help fuel some of these wind storms. But we're in the low category. We can get wind storms in April, of course. Now we're talking about hail. You also need some warmer air at the surface, but you still need it to be cold above us to help fuel the hailstones and their growth. So if you get too late in the summer, everything's too warm. You still get hail, but a lot of times it does melt by the time it's reaching the ground. So kind of mid to late spring is when we see hail peaks. So we'll probably see a, a bigger zone there in May, but for April, we start to see that highlighted region in the South Central Plains, but still all of Indiana in the low category. We are in the threat for, for some hailstorms. Tornado risks, that's probably our highest risk for the month of April. Have still a lot of rotation in the atmosphere and just enough warmth to kind of fuel some of these supercells and some of these uh, line of thunderstorms with brief spin up tornadoes along the leading edge. The bullseye for April is farther to the south, Oklahoma, North Texas, and the parts of the Washita's and extending into the deep south. But here in Indiana, we're in that low category to medium category. The higher uh, the chance goes a little bit farther to the west and it picks up in, in Illinois headed all the way to Kansas City. So tornado threats, of course, are going to be on the rise. On average, how many tornadoes do we typically see? This is data coming in from the Storm Prediction Center. We're looking at 1999 all the way to 2003. Every state is highlighted based on how many typical tornadoes do you see in the month of April. Now remember in March, you know, we had over 10 tornadoes. At one point we had at least 14 confirmed. Still some severe weather. Uh, we'll have to see the kind of final number, but our average for March was two to three. In April, now it's four. So we've already had more tornadoes than 
on average, March and April would have brought combined on average. We've had more than that. And you can see the big uptick in the numbers farther to the south, deep south and the south central plains. So we'll have to see how many tornadoes we get this year. We were talking about this. You can also check this out on WTHR Plus. What a week ending La Nina is like. You know, we talk about El Nino and La Nina. We've been in a very weak La Nina, so colder temperatures there in the Pacific Ocean. But we never talk about what's in between. You know, you don't always have one extreme or the other. Sometimes we're just in the middle. But we took a look at all the spring seasons where we had a weak La Nina and then it ended. So it just went to what we call Enzo neutral. Just average temperatures there in the eastern Pacific. What did springs look like in some of those time frames? Well, this is what we found. These are the average tornadoes here on the left. We're going to call it guidance for what we actually saw in those specific seasons could be an indicator of what happens. In March, we typically saw a little bit of an uptick. Now, this March, we saw a huge uptick. I mean, we had uh, three, four, five times the amount of, of tornadoes than typically normal. So we saw an uptick in March, but way more than what our guidance shows. April also shows a guidance of more, so we'll have to see. This is not a, a, more of a, a thing to, to scare folks, but more just to say, hey, April may be the month that we see most of our tornadoes. That may be the month where we have to watch. The good news is that a lot of times severe weather season is front loaded. They're the first half when we have these weak La Ninas that are ending. Will that be the case this year? I don't know. We'll see. But that's at least what we have seen sometimes throughout the past more so than average. All right. That's all the data that we've seen so far, uh, what we typically get for April, but what about this month specifically? This is coming in from the Climate Prediction Center. We are expecting a more active jet stream that hits the northwest, and then a lot of these what we call short waves, these little dips in the atmosphere kind of passing on through to keep some rain chances pretty on and off all the way through the Great Lakes. So we've got a weather than normal April expected possibly across Indiana, Illinois, and Michigan, and Wisconsin. So when we had that look at, you know, four and a half inches or so for April, we may see more than that. Something that we also see in these weak ending La Ninas is the chance for flooding does go up in, in Indiana, especially for the second half of, of spring. Severe weather front half, flooding second half. Maybe drier weather to the south and west for the month of April. This should say April, but we're talking about April temperatures. Uh, we're kind of just in between on things. You know, that's mainly due to the swings that we get. We're going to have warm days and cold days, but here in Indiana, there's not too much of a clear signal of what we typically would see for the month of April, at least what we're expecting. So a lot of swings. All right, here's the weather setup. We've got the jet stream coming on over us. Looks a little wonky. Here's what we're talking about. Big low pressures are continuing to form there in the western U.S. and the western plains. You get this dip in this jet stream, and where the jet stream kind of flicks up, you kind of flick up the atmosphere, you stir it up, and you get some of these severe weather chances. We've highlighted those in the telestrated uh, with kind of the dashed line, this annotation we went ahead and put. So what we're thinking is that a lot of times we're going to have these dips to the west that help continue to stir up the, the Midwest. Now, sometimes We'll be watching these low pressures that get a little bit farther south. If they do that, then it's a little bit more of a question of how cold you are. Remember, we can still get sometimes a little bit of wintry weather or we're kind of on the edge. That can be the case. You know, some uh, Aprils, we've had ice storms. You know, we've had everything. A lot of times, uh, a lot of times for April, we do have Easter. Kind of depends on that uh, the Sunday following the first full moon after the spring equinox. I think I got that right. So Easter's kind of all over the place, but many times it is in April. For April 2025, it's April 20th for, for Easter. But if these get too far south, they can kind of maybe push severe weather south and maybe also bring a little bit more wintry weather farther south. So we'll watch that. Kind of the placement of the low helps us figure out what kind of mode of precipitation that we're going to get. But we are expecting a decent severe weather season across much of the middle part of the country including right here in Indiana, but all the way to the Gulf Coast, the Central Plains, and then right through the Corn Belt here at home in Indiana. What's April going to bring? We're not exactly sure, but we have to be on our toes because always these swings can create a lot of crazy weather here at home.